Hello, welcome back to the Sterling Engine Mark III build videos. In this um, this video, I'll show you a few video clips of what I've been up to uh, over the last week, uh, and then I'll go through what I've been uh, what I've been doing. I'll try and explain uh, a little bit about it. Did the regenerator uh, top on now as best I could with the equipment I've got. Um, uh, one viewer pointed out I could probably do a TIG welder, um, which wouldn't be a bad idea. I can TIG weld, um, I just don't have access to one at the moment. Um, so in here, this is the this will be this is the lid for the regenerator. In here, I'm going to be putting uh, stainless steel scouring pads, and I'm going to be stuffing as many in as I can. 
these connections here. Um, one of them is going to have a pressure gauge on. Uh, one of them would be the, the shut off valve, which will let all the air out of the system to stop the engine. Um, and the other one will have a non return valve, so it will suck air into the engine but won't let it escape. So, as you saw, um, the crankshaft is in place and spins smoothly. Um, I bolted these little plates on the front. I had some spare brass bolts, so I thought I'd put those on there because they're nice and shiny. I've now finished welding up um, the base of the cylinders uh, and also the top of the cylinders. Um, I used stainless steel welding rods for the top because this bit here is actually stainless steel. There you can see straight through the uh, heat exchanger on the hot side. And on this side you've got the, the water jacket. So I'm now going to show what it looks like when you're looking up the cylinders from underneath the engine. All right, so this is the cold side. Uh, so you can see the, um, uh, the heat exchanger, the bottom of it. So all those narrow tubes go right through up to the top where the regenerator is. That's a, so that's the hot side. Again, you can see right the tubes there. Um, they're like flattened tubes and they go straight up through to the regenerator. What I'm hoping is this will create tons of heated surface to um, heat the air up and cool it down uh, to get the maximum differential, which will hopefully give us the maximum power. So our pistons are now fairly completed. Um, I've just sort of cleaned them up as good as I can. Well, not quite as good as I can. Uh, they're not a polished finish, I suppose that's what I'm getting at. Um, because I'm using leather seals, what I found on the previous engine I built is that they actually, they will polish this over time. Um, and because leather is quite pliable and flexible, it, it'll take it'll take a lot of the uh, intolerance and um, put up with it and be okay. So um, that's that. I've got the con rod bolted on now. Um, it's just held in there with a simple nut and bolt. Um, I found that satisfactory before, so hopefully that'll be fine. Right, so there you go. That's what I've managed to do this time. Um, with any luck next time, I'm hoping to complete the engine. Um, and then the, in the video after that, I'm hoping to actually test the engine. So, so that'd be quite exciting. So until um, next time, see you again. Bye-bye.